The Frank Center Podcast. All right, this is the Frame Center Podcast, and we got Dave and Scott here today, and we're going to be discussing all things framing and all things that are going on at the Frame Center and anything else, I guess. Yeah, anything that anybody wants to bring up in the conversations, we could certainly go over that. Yep. But today we're going to be discussing matting. Yep, a, b- a very important aspect of framing. Um, you know, there's a, you know, a lot to it. A lot of stuff for us to cover today, and you know, matting is an important part. There's a lot of different parts that are important. The frame is obviously very important. There's glass, there's mats, there's mounting, there's assembly. Mm-hmm. There's and mats a- is more than just a little slip of paper in between the glass and your picture. So we'll go over, cover every little aspect of it there just to kind of give you a little broader idea of what goes into the framing process here. So, All right, Scott, so what is a mat? Uh, mat simply, it is... Okay, I said it was simply not a piece of paper, <laughs> but it is. It's multiple layers of paper, actually. Uh, colors, fabrics, things along those lines that will actually separate your artwork from touching the glass to help protect it. And that's, that's its main purpose is protection. You know, there are, like I said, there's many types of matting. There's standard paper, different varieties of colors. It comes in different thicknesses, four-ply, eight-ply. So it gives you some depth, you colored cores, you've got fabrics, metallics, you've even got, you know, materials such as like football skin, basketball skins, golf, astroturf. You can get all kinds of different things in there for, for matting. Yep. And there is, there's a couple different types of matting in the sense of like archival, but we only use, you know, strictly use acid free mats so that, you know, everything that we do here is archival. Uh, you know, opposed to, you know, some sort of presentation mat that might, you know, actually, be, you know, have some. Yeah, instead of simply outlining it, this yeah. actually will preserve it, yeah. non-yellowing, keep everything from, again, keep it protected. That's the main purpose on this is protection. Yeah, protection. And, you know, like I said, all the ones that we custom cut here, they're acid free, not like a, just like a simple frame that you'd pick up at a, you know, like a crate and barrel or a you know any chain store chain yeah. store yep yeah yeah not not the type that you would pick up in a chain store or you know just off the shelf somewhere that has a you know a mat that you know eventually is gonna cause some damage to the art whatever the artwork or it is that you're presenting um you know if, it, if that's fine if it's just like a, you know a simple presentation but if it's something that you're going to have for a long time something that you actually have uh you know you care enough about to custom frame you know you always want to use an acid-free mat mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean and there's a couple different reasons for matting too i mean you know say your picture is cut uneven or you have a newspaper that's got all kinds of ragged edging and things along those lines it's a great way to just kind of square it off make it look nice and clean and neat trim it up and uh you know just make it presentable um you know again acting as a spacer between the glass is the main thing but you know you can also use it to increase the overall size of a piece if you think it's too small for your wall and you want to just beef it up a little bit it does make it wider overall uh, in the long run, which can, which can definitely increase its you know presence and what you see when you look at it more so than just you know a small five by seven five by seven photograph can go up to an eight by ten into an eleven oh, yeah. by fourteen and go you crazy know. make it a sixteen twenty oh Scott. god yeah yeah no you can re- <laughs> well then you can also make things look a little lost there's one yep. thing you know where you're just trying to make it you know fit a space and there's another for about balance but we'll get into balance about that you know in a little bit here but um, you know you can use it to pick up. You know, a certain color in the piece that you want to accentuate and make it, you know, pop a little bit more, uh, add depth and dimension to a piece of artwork. And then um, you can also use it so if you're, say, putting it in an art show or something along those lines, having a mat around your artwork allows a place for people to handle your work without actually physically touching your artwork itself. And that's an important thing. We have that happen here all the time when the artists come in for all the different art shows, for North River, for, uh, you know, Plymouth Center for the Arts. I mean, they, they all have these large turnouts that they have to present artwork in. Sometimes it's unframed, all depending on what they're looking to do. And the last thing you want is somebody touching, you know, 
a fine art piece, a watercolor, a uh, a pastel, because it will leave fingerprints, it will oh, leave yeah. oils off your hands, and it will destroy it eventually. It may not show up now, but three years down the line, those oils will turn yellow and discolor the piece. So it is important. Yeah, and people, I uh, think sometimes they're you know they're confused and still you know what colors to pick up, and you know you know a lot of times we'll use this you know kind of a neutral you know. Easy, you know, simple, uh, you know, mat on the top, and then we can, you know, accentuate a different color with an inner mat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and obviously there's not, there isn't a right or a wrong. I mean, it's, you know, basically whatever you, you know, you want, that's what's available, um, you know. Everyone's opinion is different. Everyone wants to pull a different color out of something. Some people want to pull out the gold accent in the piece and they don't want to do it with the frame they think it might be too too bold but a little accent you know on like I say a document or a certificate to accompany you know an, an emblem an emblem or an embossment that's on you know, the document yep. it's a nice little School simple touch that just brings a little bit more to it so that it's not just plain and flat yeah sometimes like the school colors on a diploma mm -hmm. look nice um, yeah. you know you know in you know or you know if you're doing something with you know uh, like company colors or school colors, any you know, any times that you can kind of uh, you know add in the like the branding element from you know for whatever it is you're framing. Yeah, I mean one of the big ones we get in all the time are the uh, concert posters when from around the area. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the big ones at Fenway and like Pearl Jam or you know Paul McCartney was just there the other night. You know, mm -hmm. there's always there's gonna, we're going to get a whole flush of just people coming in and we'll do the same front you know the same picture but it won't be framed the same way twice everyone's yeah. gonna pick a different frame a different type of glass but the biggest thing is usually the matting because everyone wants to pick out something different sometimes it's to accent uh you know maybe they signed it with a silver pen so they add a silver accent mm -hmm. or just to pick up that little aspect or maybe because it was at fenway they'll frame it in the you know navy and red of the red Sox. or yeah. well that you, you can know. throw in the green for the, the green, green monster, monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah the green monster going there but uh there's there's like you know, like, like dave said there's no right or wrong way of framing a piece it's all about opinion and you know your opinion is what matters yep and the, uh, and then that that other uh you know aside from the color there's also the you know, the, the amount of mat that you want to show and the amount of an inner mat you want to show. But, you know, I mean, I don't think that, again, there's really a right or a wrong. It's really just a matter of your personal opinion. Um, you know, there's a hundred right answers and very few wrong um, answers. I mean, the one thing that I tend to try to keep people away from is you don't want to have a frame and a mat that are, you know, that are the same size, you know, that mm -hmm. when, when that gets up on the wall, that starts to feel really stripey. Yep. So you want to have like a contrast uh, in the, the two sizes. And, you know, a lot of times we'll just, you know, kind of lay the mat out, lay the sample out and kind of show people the different amounts of mat board, you know, that, that it will show and kind of, you know, figure out what works best. Um, you know, th there's the uh, the golden ratio. What's that, Scott? <laughs> oh, God, I knew you were going to ask me that, of course. <laughs> it's not the one I follow, but, yeah, there is a golden ratio for, for balance. Uh, I mean, what I do yep. is, you know, one and a half times the width of the frame minimum. You got a one-inch frame, put at least a one and a half inch mat on there, maybe two. I think that's a good way to start, just so that in case you're doing multiple layers, it doesn't get stripey, it doesn't become too busy looking. You need a little bit of, you know, space in between the edge of your frame and the picture, you know, especially if you got something like, say, a gallery wall or a piece where it's going up with other pieces, the wider your mat and frame is from your artwork, it allows your eye to focus on just one picture and not the entire wall at a time. You get to look at one piece before flowing over to the next. So mm -hmm. when they're too tight, if it's like a half inch wide frame and you do a half inch wide mat, you know, it looks kind of forced and shoved in there. It doesn't have that that balance that it really needs and i always think balance is the key so yep. that one and a half times the width of a frame is usually a good starting point you can always make it smaller but it's a good place to start off with just to visually see you know what you're looking at yeah i mean it, again it, sometimes it depends on what the artwork is too mm -hmm. um, you know and, and the one thing that i would say you know you know always going larger Sometimes on a smaller piece, you know, if you're using a, you know, like a really wide frame on a smaller piece, mm -hmm. sometimes I, I, you know, I find that even just a small mat, just to give you a little bit of separation from the sure. frame, you know, that that'll do the trick as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. If you're using a two inch wide frame and you want to put a one inch mat on there, yep. especially if you're doing something like a float 
where yep. you, uh, yeah. you know, a mat can be used as a backdrop, too. It doesn't necessarily have to cover the top of your artwork. Yeah. Don't have so to you, have a hole cut in it. Exactly. You can have you have like a ruffled edge piece of paper or an antique piece or something that's, you know, not necessarily got a clean edge, but you like that look of it. You can put the mat as a backdrop behind it and float it on top. Uh, and then that way you just get a solid color background that's acid free, won't damage the artwork. We can attach it several different ways to make sure that it's not going to move. And then that way you get some uniqueness and some dimension that looks different, especially if it's a material or a fabric. It's really, really nice seeing it that way. Um, yeah, torn edges. You know, yeah. I was just framing a couple of little pieces of kids' artwork the, the other day, and, you know, the paper's not even. It's, uh, you know, you got a little bit of a, like, you know, torn off corners and, you know, we floated it and we just showing like, you know, about a half inch of map wood around and, you know, just not even so much to accentuate the color, but just to give it that separation, um, you know, in the ability to see the edge of the paper, because mm -hmm. I thought that that was like a really interesting part of the, you know, of the art. Um, you know, we just used the same mat, you know, like a matte color that was very similar to the paper color and you know just half inch showing just enough just you can see those rough edges and the character of it mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely and i mean there's also you know things you shouldn't do with matting like i said with the backdrop behind there or if it's matted normally you got to have glass on top of it oh yeah. again these are just pieces of paper with either a fabric on top or just colored core paper it's it's going to absorb moisture in the air mm -hmm. it's going to dry out it's going to fade with light if you don't have it under UV glass. And it's just going to end up curling or warping and not looking that great, you know, over time. You know, maybe, especially around here with all the different humidity changes, it can be 60 degrees one day and 90 the next. You have it in a room where, you know, like a mudroom or, you know, a front hallway where you get a lot of temperature differences from the door opening, it's going to change drastically. So it maybe look good temporarily or if you're trying to do, you know, just a quick, you know, uh, picture but make sure you get that glass back on top of it afterwards just to protect it you know the main reason is to space it between glass so if you don't have the glass and there's no real reason for the matting to be there other than to hold it in place yeah i think that sometimes people come in with like a canvas and they kind of make you know they have that in their head that they need that separation and they're kind of mistaking uh you know like a linen wrapped oh yeah the old linen liners yeah. li like a liner you know or you know even still like a like a sharp white fr white frame might give you that same look you know but people you know sometimes think that what they're looking for is a mat and it's just kind of the you know maybe it's just a something that's getting lost in translation or lost in you know, mm -hmm. uh, matting is a having... real common term that a lot of people know. So they say they want a mat and a canvas, but what they really want is just a, a spacer, a you know something yep. to break it up. And it, it can be something as simple as just stacking two frames together, a simple flat white with the you know an edge of gold, just to give it that extra bit of dimension and uh, you know to bring up pop a color or to, to brighten a whole picture up. But a mat just won't have the strength it needs to to hold to a, a canvas into a picture there's nothing to grasp it into the back of the frame so mm -hmm. it's something that you really got to think about when you go ahead and uh trying to put a picture together mats are good for some things not for everything though yep yeah i you know I, again and there's so many different so many different right answers and you know you know, I got, you know, a lot of those old antique maps, you know, some of those, they, the look is nicer without a mat. But mm -hmm. then when you get into a, you know, a certain type of setting, uh, you know, the mat looks a little bit more finished, you know, maybe in a more, uh, you know, if you're, you're going for that rustic look, sometimes the, you know, just the frame right around the edge of the map is nice. Um, you know, because I don't think they had these nice, clean cut acid free mats. No. Uh, when these, when these uh, <laughs> When these maps were, you know, originally, uh, yeah, that was not really the uh, the look back in the day. It was usually <laughs> make it as big as you can, fit it in a frame, get it on the wall, yep, show it and display it. But like, say, you had an old antique map and you had an old antique photo from an area on that map, using a mat to separate it up, something the color that's in there so it looks all uniform. That's a great way to, you know, to to add two pieces together to make it one have some continuity, yep, and two just to, you know, make it really really classy and have something that's unique that's to you that you know that you designed yeah it gives you, I, the, you along those lines too you know you know you have nine photographs and you want to put them into one mm -hmm. frame and you, but you want to have a nice clean you know clean look you know you know that's a you know multi holes you know in the mat you know it kind of 
gives you a nice way to present everything in one frame and, you know, gives you a clean look, not just, you know, a bunch of photographs squashed together. And, the old you know. collage with uh, Elmer's glue and yeah. uh, layered pictures. Yeah, and the old scotch tape layered on top of everything. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't always look as uh, appealing as, you know, a nice clean mat. So we can do all that hidden underneath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what else do we got going on over here at the Frame Center these days, Scott? Uh, well, we got the uh, we got the Hanover Day Art Show coming up. Yep. That one's something new. We got the uh, oh, we got the new ice rink out back. Yeah, the that you know shooting pucks. A lot of people were yeah. You know, they miss it. Yeah, they missed it. You know, I mean, sh we started shooting hockey pucks or you know, during the shutdown. People loved it. You know, people love seeing people shooting hockey pucks. People like showing up and shooting hockey pucks. Mm -hmm. So hey, we've taken it to the next level. It was even a staple in a lot of the pictures that we had for our uh, Calling All Artists contest that we did. If it was, if it had that little red hockey net in there, it seemed to complete the picture. We yep. had a lot of people commenting on it that they love seeing it there. <laughs> yep, and, you know, things have gotten a little, you know, with the shutdown, we were a little bit slower. We could use the parking lot to shoot pucks. <laughs> But, you know, these days it seems like the, the parking lot is full on a regular basis again. So, you know, we decided to take it to the next level. We got, you know, got a little landscaping done out back. We got a nice little space. Brightened everything up. Yep. We got synthetic up. ice down there. You know, people are on there. You can bring your skates. You know, it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, I you know, was talking to Elizabeth the other day. She's excited to shoot. Can't wait to get her out there. See if she, you know, if we can translate the field hockey into, you know, uh, ice hockey. Okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, we've got all kinds of things, all new displays, all new, hopefully some new frames and some new samples coming in now that everything is going back on track. Hopefully we can get some of those in soon. Um, yep. But uh, a lot of art. Artists coming in for a lot of different shows, a lot of private shows. We even had a couple that we've displayed here. We got Rick Murphy stuff on display yep. right now here at the store. Yeah, Rick Murphy stuff is up, and you know that's the last show till Hanover Days. I know we have some other artists lined up. Mm -hmm. Dean is doing a great job putting that all together, and yep. you know, coordinating. Um, you know, we're hoping to get the website up and running so that we have a nice archive of all these shows. Yeah. Well, um, we got the event calendar too that we're going to have. Yep. So if anybody's got any. You know, shows that they're going to be, you know, entering into or if they're having any of their own private shows, stop by. Let us know. Give me the information. I'll get it up on the calendar website so that we can kind of create a, a central hub of uh, local art events. You know, yep. you, know you guys have done so much for us by coming with us and coming in here and being with us for all these years. You know, it's nice to give a little back and help you guys out when we can. Yep, giving it back, giving them back with Frame Center merchandise. Oh, yeah, the merch, yeah. <laughs> Got new hats. Frame Center hats are, uh, you know, turning out to be a big hit. Yeah, so the other thing we can, you know, the other thing, what is this Frame Center podcast? Right. I mean, <laughs> what is its purpose? You know, and I think it's just to kind of, you know, help educate people, help, you know, keep people up to, you know, up to date on like current events. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned the calendar, you know, I think we'd like to, see, you know, see our website, see our social media feeds even turn into like a, a hub to kind of give people, um, you know, a sense of all things art related mm -hmm. that are going on in our South Shore. And maybe we even expand upon that to go a little further at some point. Yeah, we've got the group page on Facebook for anybody that wants to post things about framing and uh, shows and things along those lines, things that are going on here. Some future contests probably that we'll hold, you know, for some some. Yeah, we're trying. You know, anything we can get to, you know, to you know, to offer, um, you know, some interaction with our customer base, with the, you know, with the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what you know, one of the, you know, you know, we try to get our social media team out to, you know, some of these events. You yeah. know, you know, we've we're you know, there seems to be a real importance to that, and uh, you know, to help being a part of the community and you know, help stay active in things and yeah, spread the awareness of it. A lot of people may not have known that the uh, where did we go the other day? Where was it that we were at? We were at the uh, North River Arts North Festival. River Arts Festival. You know, it still had a really big turnout from what I could see from all the videos and images that we you know took yep. while we were there. But uh, you know, maybe a lot of people didn't know about it. Yeah, and you know, and I think keeping people aware of that, um, you know, keeping them people, you know, helping people find artists that you know styles match with their personal taste and budgets, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think is a you know a nice thing. You know, I mean, 
obviously our you know our first uh you know for I, I think obviously we you know we want to help promote the people that promote us in the sense so you know i think that you know all of these things are a way to do that and you know also, you know, people need to know that if they want to, you know, get something framed and, you know, shoot some hockey pucks at the same time, you know, this is the place to come. You know? Exactly. It's a twofer. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I think we'll be putting a push on our social media about that. You know, we can get some pictures of, you know, shooting some hockey pucks out there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've discussed this with the social media team and, you know, they, you know, they seem to be on board. Definitely, uh, definitely. And you know, I you know the gallery is coming together. I mm-hmm. mean, we've had Michael Coyne up there. We've had Karen Cass. Um, we have our, Mike Sleeper. Yeah, Mike Sleeper. You know, our you know in-house uh, photographer in mm-hmm. a sense. Um, you know, we tend to have a bunch of his stuff. Claude. Um, Claude. Yep. Our Claude. Social- one of our social media team. Yeah, he had a, a wonderful show of, uh, you know, the uh, Elegant Alien show, mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. which has, you know, made it made a couple stops already. And I know he's got a couple more in mind. And that, you know, we were fortunate enough to have that here for a you know, couple of weeks or a month. Yeah, it was almost a, yeah, it was just about a month on there. Yeah. So, I and, mean, that's the plan going forward is to be able to just help out those that, uh, like I said, have been with us for a long time help them get a place where they can, you know, display their work without having to worry about, you know, time constraints, budgeting. Yep. Um, trying to even just nail down a location lately has been crazy because now that everything's back up and active again, everything's booked for... Yeah, well, there's a lot of, you know, I was talking to uh, someone about, talking to Mary Kern about the Duxbury Art Complex, and, mm. they, you know, they've had to kind of, you know, speed their shows up a little bit too because you know they're all those you know the the two years of shutdown there was a number of shows that were scheduled so you know trying to keep those scheduled and keep things on track Um, but you know they're making it happen and you know i think that we have a nice space um you know we have all we still have space now yeah dedicated space for it's not uh intermingled with the retail uh framing anymore yep we got the the frames are still up here so you know uh, we don't want people getting you know freaking out oh no no they didn't go anywhere they just moved into their own space kind of consolidated into the back room and we have uh you know a nice nice place to present artwork and you know i'm looking forward to you know seeing some other artists that we we have lined up it's been nice seeing rick's stuff here as well i mm. mean we see a lot of you know see occasional one-offs of rick's but to see everything as a group is really nice um you know sometimes he comes in and just gets empty frames so we don't even see the pieces yeah, exactly <laughs> but he's had great turnout he sold a few pieces mm-hmm. um, so i'm sure that he's very happy with that mm. and you know hopefully we'll get him you know added to our you know uh, archive of shows that we've had here or turn them into a frame center artist or featured artist. Yeah, I'll have to have a little catalog people can go back through and look through uh, an archived photo uh, photo album that uh, show the different ones that we've had up through the years. That would be nice. Yeah, I think that that's, a, you know, that again, that's going to be a nice uh, nice thing to have uh, for people to kind of familiarize themselves with uh, artists also that are you know local i think currently i think we just have jade and michael coin and michael sleeper up but mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. you know i know we we're going to try to get a page for karen uh you know hopefully a page for claude and you know maybe a page for rick coming mm-hmm. up Karen and, stuff's really nice yep mm-hmm. yep and you know i think that that's been nice and i think that's another way you know hopefully at some point we have like you know 40 50 artists up there and you can kind of you know if you've heard of somebody or you've seen some Someone, then you can kind of link on there and you know you maybe go a, to the frame center page and kind of see a few different styles of artwork maybe we have enough at some point where we can you know you can sort and check by photographers mm-hmm. or by painters and then you can kind of get a feel for you know what their work's like and then you can link right through there to their social media or to their website and mm-hmm. i think that that'll be a nice feature to have Maybe a budding artist show or something along those lines, too, for all the people that figured out that they actually had artistic talent when they finally had the time to sit down during COVID. Yep. Can't tell you how many people walked in the door that had never done framing or even thought about frames before until uh, they finally had the time to them. Yeah, that was one. That's one of the nice things about COVID for us is was that yeah. I mean, I guess not really saying there's nice things about it. Well, something nice came out of it, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah, that you know, people did a lot of stuff at, at home, and you know people were trapped in their houses so you know all of a sudden 
taking care of their houses or putting money back into, you know, the presentation of things on their walls um, mm -hmm. was important. So Yeah. Time. Time is a big part of it. So Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. What else is going on at the Frame Center? Um, we have... Let's see. We had some new hires. Yep. We have some, some new, some some new, new, some new, new people on board. Yeah. Some new interns. Some new uh, summer help. We have uh, the Frame Center Art Contest where we, you know, with the uh, the portraits of the Frame Center, which yep. hopefully will be with the big winner, Joanne Chittick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, she captured the net in there. And exactly. She did a fantastic did. job was, with that. She wasn't the only one. But, I think that know. was the key factor in her, you know, her winning, but I'm, I'm sure it played a part. <laughs> well, it, it helped, you know, helped me, you know, for my opinion anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll be using the, those for some uh, some future content. Yeah, I think that that's going to be fun. I think we're, you know, we're planning on, you know, using some of those images for, you know, showing people how to frame things in different ways, you know, because, again, there's a lot of different rights and we have mm -hmm. a lot of different personalities here. So it'll be fun to see one piece of artwork done, uh, you know, with, you know, maybe 10 different styles, uh, you know, 10 different ideas on how to present it. And, you know. None of them will be right. None of them will be wrong. But, you know. I'm sure everybody will find something options. they like. Exactly. Yep. But, so, yeah, we'll have some more future content like this and covering specific topics, you know. Yeah. The art, we'll photography. open it up. Maybe we'll get some, some guest appearances of some people that uh, yeah. maybe specialize in those. You know? Yeah. I think that that'll be nice. Hopefully we can maybe have some talks with some artists. Um, you know, we can discuss all things framing, like we said earlier at the, at the beginning of the show. We can discuss what kind of frame, uh, you know, what kind of soundtrack we need for this. What oh, kind yeah. of opening, you know. Get some graphics in there. Yeah, you know? we want some feedback on this. Work too. on the studio. We got a nice, uh, you know, neon sign to get up behind oh, us. Oh yeah. I think that that's going to be nice. You know, we're getting there. Um, you know, we can talk about our new Pinterest links. Oh uh, yes, you know. Pinterest. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, and the new Frame Center blog. You know, that's coming together. So mm -hmm. all things on the website. I, you know, I'm definitely certainly going to be discussed. Um, you know different types of glass maybe we can get some people in here maybe we can get an expert from true get a to come by. Yeah. representative to stop by or even give us a you know we can we'll figure something out that way I'm yeah sure that. i think there's a lot to be expanded upon here and you know obviously we'll open it up to the public you know oh, yeah yeah we want to gotta give the you. people what they want scott yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh you know should be fun. We'll be discussing who uh, who shot hockey pucks. You know, I don't think we're going to let anyone, you know, you know, make anybody look like a fool. Uh, but you know, maybe if somebody does a particularly bad job, we'll you know we'll bring it up. But <laughs> but who knows? Maybe not. You know, maybe that'll just be a beat me. How about how many pucks I've shot into the woods? <laughs>